Hey everybody, welcome back. Chad with Patriot Astro. Been pretty busy lately getting a number of kids off to college and others just back into school. And on top of that, I haven't been able to image a whole lot because I've had a lot of clouds and even more rain. But I'm getting back into the swing of things and while I wait for my next break in the clouds, I've decided to try to do some target selection. Now back in March 2021, I decided to do something different and image an asteroid. And the target I chose was Vesta 4. Now this is a large asteroid in the asteroid belt. I found this to be quite rewarding and it was a nice break from imaging the typical nebula or galaxy. In the process, I was able to find a much smaller asteroid as well, just a couple miles in diameter. I have another video that goes through the entire process of capturing it as well as processing the animation. But today I wanna to show you how to do your own target selection. And to do that, we're gonna start in Telescopius. So earlier this year, I did choose Vesta 4 as my target, and at the time it was close to me. Now, when you look at the name Vesta 4, the number has to do with order of discovery, not necessarily the size, although the lower numbered and earliest discovered asteroids tend to be larger. They were the ones the astronomers back in the 1800s could see with the equipment they had. Now, there are over 100,000, well over 100,000 named and numbered asteroids today that you can find. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how you can find an asteroid that you may want to image based on what's available in your night sky. And to do that, we're gonna use telescopius.com. Telescopius.com is a great website, uh, very easy to use. All you need to do is go to the web page. You can create an account and sign in. And then once it determines your location, you can provide it with information about your equipment, your telescope, your cameras, etc. So you can do things like framing. Now, what I'm going to do is click on targets here and then click on comets and asteroids. You can see that it says asteroids only. Gives me some time frames and give me some other parameters. On the right hand side, it's going to sort the available asteroids for me based on apparent magnitude. So you can see that at the top, we have Asteroid Palace 2 at magnitude 8.7. If you're not familiar with magnitudes, uh, here's a little chart that's very easy to use. So you can see the naked eye is at about 6.0. Polaris is close to 2.0. Sirius is negative 1 or negative 1.5. And the full moon is negative 12. So the further you go to the left, the further negative in magnitude you go, the brighter the object is. The further positive you go, the dimmer the object is. So once we get above six, and in this case, 8.7, we're gonna need a telescope and longer exposures to be able to capture this object. So we have a number of objects here, and we can see the rise and set information. We can see that Pallas 2 actually is fairly available for me. Uh, almost all, all night long, so it's going to be a great target for me. But there are other options as well. We have Series 1 um, that is available to us. We have Hebe, we have Iris, we have Victoria, and then a whole slew of others as well. And again, we're sorting by apparent magnitude. So let's look at Asteroid Palace first, and I'll show you where you can get some additional information that you may want uh, before you move forward with your imaging session and just for some learning as well. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the JPL website and specifically I'm going to go to the JPL small body database browser and I'm going to go ahead and search for Palace here. Now you can see the link on screen. I'll also make sure to put this in the comments. Now when you search for this, you're going to get a lot of data back and most of this may not be interesting to you. But one particular piece of information I find interesting immediately is the diameter of this object. Now this is 545 kilometers, which is only about 339 miles in diameter. So it's a very small uh, object that isn't super reflective, right? It's a chunk of rock rolling in the asteroid belt. Another option here is to click on orbit diagram. Now, when we click on the orbit diagram, you can see the orbital path, the orbital trajectory within our solar system between Mars and Jupiter and the asteroid belt. So we can see that Pallas 2 actually has um, a different type of orbit. It's a little bit askew from our own orbital plane. So it actually comes up higher 
than we are, and then dives down through the plane and goes below our orbital plane on the backside of this graph. Now, if you look at where the Earth currently lies in relation to Pallas 2, we can see it's pretty close to us, which is why it is a good target for us. We can step forward, and as we step forward, we can see we're moving away from the object. So it's actually a good target right now, or a much better target than it will be in, say, six months when we're on the other side of the Sun, and Pallas 2 hasn't probably moved all too far along in its orbital path. So we can continue to look at this and learn about it by going to Wikipedia. Wikipedia has lots of information about its discovery, potentially its makeup. You need to remember that a number of these asteroids have been visited by um, different types of NASA probes, etc. So what about Ceres 1? It's about the same magnitude. It's not as available to me in my location, but let's take a look at that as well. We'll go back into the JPL database. We'll search for Ceres 1. You can see the diagram here shows us that it is very large, right? So uh, the Earth, the Moon, and Ceres to scale, it is actually the largest body in the asteroid belt. So 939 kilometers in diameter, which is about 583 miles. If we look at the orbital path, we can see it's not quite as tilted as the previous asteroid. And if we step forward day by day, we can see we're actually catching up to it. So this may be something you want to um, image in maybe the next few weeks, next month, next couple months. As we approach it, it'll get even brighter in magnitude. Now you're never gonna get detail. It'll look like a bright star in motion on screen, but it may be a little bit easier to image. You may be able to take shorter exposures because the magnitude is a little bit more favorable. So we can look at more detail here about Ceres. We can see it's a dwarf planet. It is actually quite round. It has enough gravity to create a round object in this particular case. And then again, remember, because these NASA probes have visited it, landed on planets uh, or dwarf planets like this um, or, or other asteroids, we may even have animations. This is an animation of Vesta 4, which I mentioned I imaged earlier in the year. So there are a lot of other ones that are available to us in Telescopius. If I scroll down a little bit, the one I do wanna show you last here is Victoria. If I look at Victoria, look at this. Look at this diameter, 115 kilometers, just 71 miles in diameter. Very, very small, yet something you will be able to image from an animation perspective. Again, no detail, but you'll be able to get an animation of this object that you can share with others. So if we look at this on screen, we can see it looks like we're past it a little bit here. But it is something that if I want to target now, I would be able to get some images of Victoria 12 in an animated backdrop of stars. Now remember, back in March when I imaged Vesta 4, this was a fairly large object. And I did seven hours of four minute exposures. Now this may have been overexposed, but luckily because I overexposed, I was able to catch this very small object in the top left corner, another asteroid. Now this asteroid happened to be asteroid 19743 and it's only 6.4 kilometers in diameter. Just a little over three and a half miles wide. And I was able to capture this object and its reflectivity as it went across the night sky. I do have a YouTube video about this that you may wanna go back and look at. I specifically cover how I imaged it, how I processed this, how I created the animation, and even how I identified the object within Stellarium. I hope you found the concepts in this video to be interesting and something you might wanna try on your own. If you do, please share pictures, ask questions, let me know how it's going in the comments below, or go to my website, www.patriotastro.com, and locate my email address and just send me a message, maybe even some pictures. I've got more content coming. As always, like and subscribe, and hopefully you have clearer skies than I do.